Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on impedance matching. Okay, so this video, okay, I'm going to discuss the various tab line. Okay, the first one that I'm going to discuss will be linear. Next will be exponential. The third one will be triangular. And last but not least, Profensan tab line. Okay, so this video, I mainly will discuss the difference okay, between these four types of tab line. On my next video, okay, which is part 17, okay, I will have an example. Okay, how can we actually calculate the impedance and also the reflection coefficient? But this video, let's quickly just understand okay, what are the key difference between these four types of tab lines. Okay, this is my part 16 series discussion on impedance matching. So guys, if you're keen to know more about impedance matching, okay, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on impedance matching. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome okay, to ask me through the comment. Okay, before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for your support. Okay, let's quickly understand okay, what is actually a tap line. Okay, so we have already discussed how a real low impedance can actually match to a transmission line over a desired bandwidth okay, using either a or multiple section matching transformer. Okay, so this is what we have discussed early on. Okay, we have discussed how can we actually match okay, by using either lambda over 4 matching transformer or multiple section of matching transformer. As the number n of discrete transformer section actually increase, okay, which means that we introduce, for example, more and more stages to do this impedance transformer. Okay, you can imagine that the steps change in characteristic impedance be between the session, they actually become smaller okay, because we are going to have more session. And you can imagine that the increment in terms of the steps, they also become smaller and smaller. And the transformer okay, in a geometry, they actually approach of a continuous step line. Okay, so basically this is what it means. So if we have infinite stage, Okay, so basically they will be looking like a very gentle. Okay, so therefore, this is what it means. It actually will become like a continuous step line. Okay, so basically you just imagine we are going to have more and more of this. So the steps, okay, they become smaller and smaller because we have more. So therefore, because they become smaller and smaller, they actually behave like a continuous step line. Okay, so basically this is a tap transmission line, okay, matching session. And this is actually the model for uh, increment step change in impedance of the tapered line. You can see this is actually for a step change. In practice, okay, however, a matching transformer must have a finite line. Okay, so as I mentioned, okay, in the reality world, for example, this is the matching network. Okay, the length cannot be infinity. Okay, so the length must be infinity. So this is what it means. So therefore, they actually only consist of only a few sessions. Okay, so the more sessions I have, okay, the more they actually consume in terms of space. So therefore, we could not afford this kind of space. So therefore, typically, we are only actually accommodate only a few sessions. Okay, this suggests that instead of using discrete session, okay, the transformer could be continuous step up. Okay, so therefore, different passband characteristics can be achieved by using various types of tap. A tap transmission line okay, is one in which the characteristic impedance gradually change from one end to the other end. So basically, the impedance can be from big to small or small to big in the width of the so-called microstrip line. So basically, this is what it means. So the key idea or the goal is actually to provide a smooth transition Okay, between two different values of impedance. Okay, thereby, we actually minimize the reflection. So basically, if we can afford to have a smooth transition, we actually minimize reflection. And once we minimize reflection, okay, we have this so-called maximum power transfer over. 
Okay, so this is a tap transmission line, matching session, and a model for an increment length of tap line. Okay, the tap transmission line session here. So basically, you can see that this is like a continuous so-called a tap line. Okay, let's take a closer look. Okay, so in this session, okay, which means that this video, okay, we will derive an approximate theory, okay, once again, based on the theory of small reflection, okay, to predict the reflection coefficient as a function of the impedance step line along the position, okay, which means that this is basically along the position of the tap line. So basically in this video, okay, making use of the small reflection, okay, we can actually easily calculate the impedance value okay, at the various end of the tap line. So this is what I mean. Okay, consider the continuous tap line in the top figure as being made up of several increments. So imagine there are a lot of very, very small increments. Okay, so the increment is a lot so small that you won't actually see the steps here. So this is what I mean. Okay, so several increment session of length Z okay, with an impedance change from one session to the next okay, as shown in the figure below. Okay, the key idea of or the goal of this tap design, okay, so in short, they actually limit the reflection coefficient at the input port to below a target value. So basically, we set the target. So basically, on the target, on the reflection coefficient. So as long as we compliant, then we actually successfully meet the goal. Okay, so this is achieved okay, by selecting a tap length that is significantly longer than the signal wavelength. So keep this in mind. Okay, so if you design uh, doing some form of matching, the tap length definitely must be quite significantly bigger than the signal wavelength. Okay, if not, okay, you can't do any impedance matching at all. So doing so ensure that the signal actually experience a smooth impedance transition along the tap rather than encounter a large impedance mismatch at the loop end. Okay, so basically this is what I mean over here. Okay, so there are actually a few common types of impedance tap line. Okay, for example, we have the linear type. Okay, so linear type means that this is actually uniform, or maybe you can say that this is just a straight line. Okay, so therefore you can see that this is actually linear. Okay, you can see that basically everything all increment in a linear manner. Next will be exponential tap. As the name implies, okay, you can see that the line can be in a form of exponential or you can have this form of, let's say the so-called the lower impedance here, the higher impedance is here. So you can imagine that we actually can have this form of tap line. So basically this is what we call the exponential tap line. So next will be clock fencing tap. Okay, so basically this is a form of coefficient tap. So you realize that this coefficient tap is actually the most effective way. They actually has the minimum reflection coefficient. Okay, so basically this is actually a popular method, okay, but the design is actually quite complicated. Okay, so on the next video, you will see this. Okay, the term linear tap actually refer to two types of tap. Okay, so linear, there are actually two types. One is basically the linear shape. As you can see from here, the shape is actually linear. So this is what we call a linear shape tapered line. Okay, another one is we call a linear impedance. So in short, you can imagine that the impedance also grow or increase in a linear manner. So let's assume that if the so-called the, the shape okay, actually increase in a linear manner, okay, we can more or less assume that the impedance will be also in a linear manner. Okay, not really that 100%, okay, but you can imagine that if we have this linear shape, we actually can roughly estimate that we are going to have a linear impedance. Okay, a linear tap line is actually a type of transmission line okay, where the characteristics impedance actually gradually change along its length in a linear fashion. Okay, so this is what I mentioned earlier on. You can see that they actually change along a line in a linear fashion. Okay, this gradually change help minimize signal reflection. Okay, so as from here, okay, since it's a smooth one, so we actually minimize the signal reflection, okay, which can occur when there is a sudden mismatch between different impedance. Okay, so imagine the impedance value actually over here, they actually vary. So this part here is actually to do the impedance transform. Okay, so from here you can see that okay, there is actually a gradual change. Okay, so this is to ensure that we keep the signal reflection as low as possible. Okay, so this is what I mean. Okay, such as when we actually transmit from one transmission line 
Okay, for example, micro strip line, let's say we go to coplanar strip line or coplanar waveguide. So therefore, there will be a high chance that we are going to have mismatch or when we actually go from one transmission line to another antenna. So definitely with this case, there is always a high possibility of having some form of mismatch. Okay, let's come to the impedance profile for the linear tap line. So, so this is what I mentioned early on. Okay, so this is basically based on the position. Okay, where it will be the position. So this will be the source impedance value. This will be the load impedance value. So you can see that over here, you can see that you actually calculate in a linear manner. So because as I mentioned early on, if we have this linear shape, we assume that more or less we are going to have a linear impedance. So therefore, this is the equation okay, to govern okay, what will be the impedance value okay, along the impedance matching. Okay, so basically, you just need to sub inside the value, Z value, what will be the Z value. Okay, so basically, from here, you will be able to know what will be the impedance that is required. Let's say we, we do over here. So basically, you can calculate the impedance at this point here. Okay, a simple expression for the input reflection coefficient. Okay, for this linear tap line, they are actually not available. Okay, so therefore, okay, this can be only be found. Okay, so if we do a simulation. Okay, so basically, this is what in terms of impedance profile and also the reflection coefficient for linear tap line. Okay, this reflection coefficient is not easily available. You need to do it through the simulation. Next will be on exponential tap line. Okay, so an exponential tap line actually refers to a type of transmission line or structure where the width or impedance change exponentially along its length. Okay, so basically, this is what it means. So you can see that it actually in an exponential way. So therefore, this is how they actually get the name of exponential tap line. Okay, so this tapping is often used to gradually transit between different impedance. So basically, let's say we do a impedance matching okay, from a high impedance to a low impedance, let's say. So basically, you can see that we actually do this impedance matching. So this is what it means here. So typically, this exponential tap line, they are normally used to do a transition to match impedance or to control the electrical characteristics of a circuit. Okay, the key advantage to use this exponential tap line okay, is that the change in the line parameters, such as the width or impedance, occur exponentially, okay, rather than linearly or suddenly. Okay, this also helps to minimize reflection and also improve impedance matching, okay, especially in high frequency application. Okay, so in short, this exponential okay, is better used at higher frequency application. Okay, let's come to the characteristics of this exponential tap line. So firstly, it is quite simple, okay, because, okay, as I mentioned that they actually has an exponential effect. So because of this, it actually has some smooth impedance variation, okay, that is easy to analyze. In terms of performance, it's actually quite good, okay, but definitely not the best optimum matching, okay, as I mentioned earlier on, Okay, later on you will see that I will have some discussion. Okay, which one actually has the best optimal matching over a block bandwidth? Okay, as for the reflection coefficient, okay, they actually reduce exponentially along the length. Okay, but this is not the best case scenario for minimize reflection. Okay, typical application for this exponential tap line is basically they are widely used. Okay, due to its simplicity, okay, which means that it's very easy to design and the ease of implementation in many impedance matching application. So this is also a very popular method okay, to do impedance matching. Okay, just have an exponential okay, uh, in terms of the shape and also in terms of the impedance. Okay, so basically this is how the impedance change. You can see that they actually change in an exponential way. Okay, so this is actually the reflection coefficient. Okay, on my next video, okay, then I will have an example how can we calculate this and maybe we can have a deeper discussion on this. Okay, but at this moment, okay, I just want to quickly introduce what is actually exponential tap line. Okay, so before I continue, guys, okay, please help this channel by like this video. Okay, if you have learned something from this video, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Thank you so much. Let's quickly go to another tap line, which is the triangular tap line. 
Okay, a triangular taper in a microstrip line refer to a gradual change in the width of the microstrip transmission line. Okay, so basically the name triangular is actually quite misleading. Okay, so basically you can imagine that for triangular, you actually have two lines or maybe two sections. Okay, so basically you actually control them in a two session in a triangular basis. Okay, so this is what I mean here. Okay, where the width actually vary in a triangular shape. Okay, this design is used to provide smooth impedance transformation between different sections of the line and to minimize signal reflection at junction. Okay, the triangular taper actually allow for a gradual transition okay, between different characteristic impedance, helping to reduce discontinuity and also improve the overall performance. Okay, so basically this is another way to design the tap line using the triangular. So how does the shape actually look like? Okay, so on the one end, we actually have this narrow end. So basically this narrow end will be at the input or output side. So one side will be narrow end. Okay, the micro strip line actually begin with a narrow width at one end. Okay, correspond to a higher current uh, correspond to a higher characteristic impedance. Okay, so th this is typically the side with the higher impedance. Okay, so basically this will be the higher impedance. So basically because of the higher impedance, we actually have the so-called narrow end here. So widening towards the other end, okay, the width of the micro strip line actually also gradually increase. Okay, forming a linear tap until it reaches the opposite side. Okay, so basically for example, we can have so-called uh, separate the length into two sections. Okay, one having this linear line, another session can have a different gradient. Okay, so this is what I mean. Okay, the different gradient here, okay, widening actually create a triangular shape. Okay, when we actually view from above, the wide end actually correspond to a lower impedance. So basically, you can imagine that we can actually have two form of linear. Okay, one for the narrow end, okay, one for the so-called wider end. And basically, the key thing is to do so-called impedance matching and to reduce the reflection coefficient as much as possible. Okay, so again, this will be the profile for the triangular tap line. Okay, as I mentioned, you can see that we actually, most of the time we actually so-called separate them into two sessions here. So you can see that these are the two sessions. The total length of this impedance matching is L. So we actually have two sessions okay, to do this impedance matching. Okay, so as I mentioned, this will be the impedance profile. Okay, so next video, I will show you how to calculate this impedance profile. Okay, so this will be the reflection coefficient for the triangular tap line. So don't do well so much on this. So next video, I'm going to have a simple example. How can we actually calculate the reflection coefficient? Okay, let's quickly come into the characteristics of the triangular tap line. Okay, so firstly, okay, this is actually a quite a very simple, maybe not the simplest, but one of the easiest way in terms of impedance variation. In terms of performance, okay, this tap actually perform well okay, in terms of reducing reflection. Okay, however, okay, this is actually not effective over a so-called wide frequency matching here as compared to the more complex taper. In terms of reflection coefficient, okay, the reflection redu uh, reduction is actually less optimum okay, as compared to the more advanced, okay, which is the Krupfensen uh, uh, style of designing the tap line. Okay, so in terms of application, this is actually suitable for application where you need it to be very, very simple. Okay, so it's actually more crucial than achieving the best impedance match over a wide bandwidth. Okay, so this is actually for the triangular. Okay, so this is the last one that I'm going to discuss, okay, which is called a crop pension tap line. Okay, so I hope I read this correctly. Okay, so this tap line is actually named um, after the designer, okay, which is Robert W. Crop Fenson. Okay, who actually developed this method in the 1950s okay, for an uh, optimum tapping solution. Okay, the Crofensen tap line is actually a type of tap transmission line used in microwave engineering. So the key idea is actually also the same. So they actually gradually transit okay, between different impedance with minimum reflection. So the key word is this method of design is to ensure to have a minimum reflection over a very wide bandwidth. Okay, it is commonly used in application like antenna, 
wave guide and microwave circuit where a smooth impedance transition, which is very crucial okay, in order to have a efficient signal transmission. Okay, so this is another method, okay, how to design the tap line is using this crop tension tap line. So let's quickly come to the key feature. Okay, so basically first one, it actually has some form of smooth, not that smooth as compared to the other one, okay, but end of the day, it is still considered a very smooth impedance transition. Okay, the tap profile of the line is actually designed okay, to gradually change. Okay, keep this in mind. If we want to do impedance matching, we can't have a drastic change. So therefore, the change need to be gradually changed. Okay, the impedance from one value to another. Okay, so this is to ensure minimum signal reflection, which can be caused by impedance mismatch. Once we have impedance mismatch, we will have reflection. And thereafter, we will not be able to have maximum power transfer. Okay, exponential profile. Okay, the Crookfenson actually use an exponential function okay, to control how the impedance change along the line. Okay, so this profile is derived from an optimal solution that minimizes reflection over the widest bandwidth. So basically this method, you can actually have the widest bandwidth, okay, which means that you actually can have more frequency that is able to achieve this impedance matching. Okay, so this is what is on Crookfenson tape line. Come to the third point on the reflection coefficient optimization. Okay, the tap is actually designed using mathematical techniques so as to minimize the reflection coefficient across a wide frequency range. Okay, this actually make it very super as compared to the simpler tap design. Okay, but this method, keep this in mind, they are much, much difficult to design. So they are much, much difficult as compared to the linear or even exponential. Okay, the easiest one definitely will be linear followed by exponential. However, when you actually use this method, Crookfenson, you actually want to have a bulk band performance. Okay, bulk band operations. Okay, so since this is impedance matching for a bulk band, then definitely we actually can have a bulk band effect from this method here. So this is actually very particularly useful for bulk band application okay, because it achieves a better impedance match over a wider frequency okay, as compared to the rest of the tap design here. In terms of the length, Okay, the Crofensian tape is in general much shorter as compared to the other type of taper line okay, for a given performance level. Okay, so therefore, because of this, this is actually more efficient okay, in terms of space, okay, which is actually sometimes can be very crucial when we actually want to have a compact design. Okay, coming to the application of this Crofensian tape line, okay, so basically for waveguide, Okay, to connect session of waveguide with different cross session area. Okay, so this method is also able to design impedance matching using this Crofenser tap line. Microwave antenna okay, to match the impedance between the antenna and the feed line. Okay, so basically this method can also do impedance matching. Transmission line matching, okay, so in system that operate over a right range of frequency so as to ensure low signal loss and we are going to have a high efficiency. Let's come to the impedance profile for this Crofenson tap line. Okay, so the Crofenson tap line is actually designed using optimum transmission line theory, which I have explained earlier on. So the key thing is they want to minimize reflection as much as possible. So once we actually reduce the reflection, hence this will be more effective okay, as compared to the exponential or the triangular tap line. Okay, so it actually used a very sophisticated mathematical function okay, based on Purcell function and also Chapichel polynomials. Okay, so impedance is not linear, okay, which means that the impedance is not going to increase in a linear manner or decrease in a linear manner, or and also definitely not in an exponential manner. Okay, but the tap is actually shaped to minimize reflection within a specific frequency range. So basically, in short, this method actually can design a wide band. And basically, as this part mentioned here, okay, the impedance is not going to change in the linear manner or in the exponential manner. Okay, so later on, on my next video, I will have an example. Okay, how can we actually design this Crofenson tap line? Okay, the goal in this tap design, firstly, is to limit the reflection coefficient at the input, in, at the input port to be below some target value. Okay, so for example, we, we actually have some target value and so therefore if we can limit the reflection coefficient we can conclude that we actually meet the goal 
Okay, so this is done by selecting an appropriate tab line such that the tab line is much longer than the signal wavelength, which I have mentioned earlier on. Okay, so this is because we need to ensure that the signal, as you see the smooth impedance trans transition along the tab line rather than a large impedance mismatch at the low end of the tab bar. Coming to the characteristics, Okay, again, I like to discuss in terms of performance, in terms of bandwidth, and also the complexity. In terms of bandwidth, is actually offer the lowest reflection. Okay, remember, in order to achieve impedance matching, we want to keep the reflection as much as possible. And this method to design the tap line using this coefficient, they they actually has the lowest reflection over a given bandwidth for a specific tap length. Okay, this therefore actually provides an optimum impedance matching. Coming to the bandwidth, so basically they are wide band. Okay, so they are actually having an excellent performance over a wide band or bulk frequency range. Design came okay, mainly to provide minimum reflection over a given bandwidth. Okay, in terms of complexity, as I have illustrated, this is definitely much more difficult to design. Okay, so on my next video, you're going to share this experience. Okay, so basically this method is actually the most difficult. So therefore, it is actually more complex to design and implement as compared to the other two. In terms of application, okay, most of the time when we actually use this Crofenson tab line, we want to use in application that require high performance impedance matching, okay, which, which means that we want it to be as good as possible. Then we will use this Crofenson tab line because it actually has the most or minimum reflection. So therefore, we actually prefer to use this Crofenson to design the impedance matching. Okay, such as in microwave and RS system, okay, where the bandwidth efficient is crew clicker. Okay, so next, okay, so this will be my last slide. I want to quickly highlight the key difference between these three methods using exponential tap line, triangular tap line, and also crofenser tap line. Okay, so for exponential, okay, as I mentioned early on, the shape will be in an exponential manner. Okay, the the impedance also will be in an exponential manner. Same for the triangular. Okay, linear. Okay, so basically at the session, you actually have a straight line. Okay, after they come to the half of the so-called the length, another linear manner. So basically, you can imagine it's just like a saw tool. Okay, so this method, Crofenson tap line, basically this is the optimum way. So basically, this is a optim mathematical way to optimize by using this championship function. Okay, next on the reflection coefficient. Okay, so exponential again, the name they they actually also reduce exponential. Okay, but this is definitely not optimum. Okay, coming to the triangular, okay, so they actually has a moderate reflection reduction. Okay, definitely better than step change, but you still can improve. So this method, Crofenson, they actually has the most, sorry, has the minimum reflection. Okay, so therefore this is actually the preferred way. Okay, however, as I mentioned earlier on, okay, the design is actually very tedious, very complex. Coming to the bandwidth performance, okay, so if you use this exponential, okay, you actually has a moderate okay, for, I, I won't even want to say good, so basically I will say that it's actually moderate, okay, definitely not the best. Okay, if you use this triangular, then you have a limited bandwidth. Okay, so basically they are not known to have a wide bandwidth. However, if you want to have a wide bandwidth, then you consider to use this Crofenson tap line. So basically, they have the best wide bandwidth as compared to the other two. Okay, so in terms of design complexity, this is definitely the most easiest. Okay, so exponential and then triangular also very simple. The linear is even even, even more simple. Okay, but this method using Crofenson, they are actually very complex and we actually need to do some uh, so-called calculation before we actually can design this Crofenson tap line. In terms of typical application, is basically to do some general impedance matching. Okay, so with just a little bandwidth, okay, uh, so-called a very wide band, so a very narrow band. Simple impedance matching where cost or space is a concern. Okay, so basically you this method, okay, when you actually have a so-called issue in terms of cost and also space. Okay, so basically this is also quite easy to design. Okay, when we talk about Crofenson, basically this actually ensure a very high performance RF and microwave system. Okay, so in short, in terms of bandwidth, they are actually pop band, which means that they can actually cover a wide bandwidth okay, to do this impedance matching.
Okay, with this, I like to end my discussion. Okay, please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.